My name's Josh Baer. I don't know if you've ever heard of me. I run the Josh Baer Group at Keller Williams Real Estate in Sewell, New Jersey. And I have been with Keller Williams for over 15 years, full time. And I work on a team. It's just me and one other agent who's actually sitting next to me. And uh, his name's Kevin O'Grady. He's actually my father-in-law. I work 100% uh, seller side and he's 100% buyer side. So what I'll do to start is, does anybody have any questions that they wanna see covered during this uh, hour that we have together? You better wake up. Woo I think I personally would like to see the different lead generation tactics that you use consistently that have worked for you. Okay, that's perfect. And the ones that haven't worked for you. Anyone else? Uh, I'm just on board with that. Uh, I'm fairly new. Uh, like my first open house is this weekend. So I, I need to learn pretty much everything. So. All right. So the goal today is to try to learn how to get listings consistently. What I do ask, I know it's tough. I don't know who's working other jobs, but typically for the Zooms, if you Zoom, I recommend putting your screen on because how you show up here is how I assume you show up out there. So who has the courage and is ready to show their face and get involved and smile and get in, get excited. That's what it takes. Yeah, I, was, I like the way I looked. I would do it more often, but. I'm not buying you. It doesn't matter how you look. <laughs> yeah, we are. All right, I'm so here's uh, how I get listings in this district. Sorry, what'd you say, Robert? Uh, you're in the office. So. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> All right, so how I get listings consistently is uh, you're probably, I'm probably going to beat a dead horse um, based on the classes I've seen ahead of me, but you really want to start off by creating a lead generation plan. I don't know who wants to take notes. I recommend taking notes. I don't know if this is recorded. Do you send this back out to everybody? I do. Okay, cool. So my lead generation plan is start simply with the number one, which is the most important thing that I do is I schedule lead generation or prospecting, whatever you want to call it, daily. Same time every single day, and I do not skip it. So I'll show you my calendar. It's going to be hard to read, but this is my, my daily calendar. And at the top, you'll see 8 to 11, Monday through Friday, is lead generation time. Every single day. So nothing interrupts that, and that actually will help you begin your quest of getting listings consistently. And right now, it's very hard to get listings, so you might have to actually increase your lead generation time from 8 to 11 to, you know, however many hours you need to hit your goals that you want to hit. So that's the first thing I do is I schedule time every single day. Best times to call, text, or email, those are all forms of lead generation. Uh, I recommend any time between 8 and 11 and five and eight at night. Anybody know why you wouldn't want to call between like 12 and four? People are working. They, they're, they're, not gonna, they're not going to, they're not going to pick up their phone when they're at work. That's not a thing. Yep. It's the least, uh, it's proven. I mean, they've done studies on this forever that you want to try to catch people before they get to work. That's why they recommend a late eight to 11. That's usually when people have most of their energy throughout the day is when they first wake up and get going at night you'll uh, probably actually get more contacts when you lead generate, but they may be a little more cranky only because they've had a whole day of stress of work, kids schedules, kids activities. And the end of the day is when they kind of dial back and want to rest. So nighttime, I mean, obviously if you're dual career nighttime is the only time you can call, it's better than nothing. So who are you calling? What numbers are you using during those times? Awesome. That's actually my next point. So that's what you want to do. Not only scheduling. So eight to 11 is what I schedule every day, but then you got to figure out before you even start your lead generation schedule, who the heck am I going to call? <laughs> right? So you want to actually budget that out in your daily calendar. So from eight to let's 
birthday, 830 daily. The first thing I do is I call new expireds listings, which don't really exist much in this market and for sale by owners. I pay for a service that actually sends me them every day. There's plenty of them. The one I use is called Vulcan 7. V-U-L-C-A-N, the number seven. That's probably the higher end of services. Also the most expensive. That's $318 a month. It's like a car payment. Yeah, it's crazy. It's thinking? called Vulcan 7. There's so many out there. There's Mojo, which is another great high powered system. So it's, it's like a built in dialing system. That's why it's so pricey too. So it dials for me, all the people that I need to reach and gives me all their contact information daily. So I do that from eight to eight 30 every single day. And then from eight 30 to nine 30, roughly I do what's called lead follow-up. So those are calls that I, maybe I spoke to John Smith two days ago and he said, call me back in two weeks, but I do not wait two weeks. I wait two days and I call John Smith back. So those are the type of calls I make every day from eight to eight 30 lead follow-up. So that includes old, you know, people I've talked to expired for sale by owners and my database, which includes everybody, but you don't have to call the same people I call. Um, the most popular people to call, you should try to figure out who you want to master. Like there's family, you can call friends, neighbors, coworkers, people from church, uh, your schools, you know, all the teachers. And if you get involved with schools with your kids, um, this is a big one that people I think often forget about. How many people here have kids involved in sports or other activities? Probably a lot. How many actually reach out to all the other moms, dads, grandmoms, grandpas of all the kids on the teams? It's a huge miss. I can guarantee not many people do it. It's because I don't know why. I, I didn't used to do it when my kids are real young, but I do it now religiously. Like I make sure they know I'm a realtor. And I don't do it where I'm shoving it down their throat. Um, but I simply just step up and I you know, try to organize who's bringing snacks to the games. And of course, in my email signature, it says I'm a realtor. So they start to pick up pretty quickly. That I'm organized. I'm very planned. I'm aggressive. And those are the kind of things you want to deliver to people in your database. And that's how they'll become part of your database. So with the key with that, with your uh, sporting events, is try to ask whoever's running the program, if they could send you the contact information for the team. But you want to do it for business purposes. You just say, I want to do it because I want to help organize snack delivery. Who's bringing snacks? Uh, I want to be able to get the coaches something at the end of the season, things like that. So you can gather all that data because that's literally all you're looking for uh, when it comes to lead generation is to start get data in for people to add. Uh, I also call database expireds for sale by owners, just listed, just sold calls during lead generation time. Uh, vendors, that's a big one too. So you could, you're going to be giving as realtors, as you know, you probably have a home inspector, right? That you give business to uh, pest control, radon, title, mortgage, homeowners insurance, all these different levels of business that you're giving out to these people for free you should be asking for business in return. Anybody do that currently? <clears throat> All right, write that one down. Feel free to participate too. You just press the unmute button and talk. At yes, I call my vendors on a daily basis as well. This you do? is Howard, the real estate doctor, yes. Awesome. Howard Hugh. Howard Winters. Winters. Okay. Thanks for stepping up, Howard. All right. So you also call your farm if you live in a area, you know, a neighborhood. Uh, there's ways to look up phone numbers for your date, you know, your farming area if you do farming right now and call them. Those are all different areas. If you really want to call, um, text, email, but you want to create a plan that works and work it every single day. So like I said, I schedule uh, a time to call every day. So we do it from eight to 11, my team. And the key is to make sure that during that time, 
you're fully prepared. So you have, so say I want to call expireds from eight to eight thirty. That doesn't mean at eight o'clock that I'm getting on the Vulcan seven system and just getting set up. It means prior to eight o'clock, I'm coming fully prepared to know who I'm calling and all the contact information is ready to call, text, email, whatever method I'm using that day. Does everybody know what I mean by that? So I've been doing this 15 years. I just watch people who do lead generation um, and they'll start at eight o'clock and then they'll start looking up people to call. And so by the end of their lead generation session, they've reached out to six people because it takes them a while to get numbers in order, emails together. You wanna get all your data ready to go for your daily calls. Maybe and then holding myself back, but I always feel like I wait till like after nine o'clock to start calling people because I worry that they'll be mad at me that I'm calling them early at eight o'clock. Do you ever get that though? Uh, every now and again, if you're nice and professional, they won't get mad at you. And the good news is if somebody gets mad at you, you probably never talk to them again. So don't let it bother you. Right. And it's not like they're, it, you're going to weigh on their mind. They're just going to hang up the phone and move about their day or go back to sleep or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Just be apologetic if they're angry and say, uh, have a great day. That's it. I literally been making these calls for 15 years and never got in trouble for making an eight o'clock call as far as them trying to find out who I was and find me or turn me in zero times. Not that it couldn't happen, okay. but as long as you're hey, nice, and don't get argumentative and you'll be fine. Hey, Josh, can I say something real quick? This is Howard. Howard, um, Mr. Winter. I, I totally agree with you. And what's funny is that, you know, I use the same systems that you use. And I have actually done before when I have called someone and they seem kind of, they talk to me or they seem kind of irritated and hang up on me. I read dial them and call them back and say, I'm sorry. You know, we just got disconnected and I would just finish my, uh, my spill and actually took listings that way as well. It works. Do you yeah. have like you a list afraid. of programs that you, you would recommend? Yeah, I use the same as Josh. I use, uh, I, I use Vulcan 7, I use Mojo. You know, they prepare all of the uh, data for you. Okay. And all you have to do is just go in and just click a couple buttons and then it start dialing for you. Okay. But it, it is very, very your budget. What you're looking to do is you just got to create a system. If you don't have the budget to pay for a monthly system like this, you can, so there's ways to get numbers. Uh, you know, you can go to your local library and get phone numbers. Uh, you could just start off simply by going in your cell phone. You'd be amazed how many people are in your cell phone. It's yeah, called that's what I've been doing so far. You realize, oh shit, I got people in here I haven't called in forever. And mm -hmm. it works. You just start going down. You're like, oh, John's not in my database. I should put him in. And what I mean by database, I don't know how new everybody is on the call. But so I use a system called Top Producer alongside of um, Command. So it kind of, I put all my contacts in. So say I make a good contact today, John Smith will go into command and top producer mm -hmm. and labeled a certain way. So I know when to follow up with John. All right, so preparing. So I talked about preparing. So before my eight o'clock calls, I actually, I role play daily. So what that is, is simply you find out people who are extremely good at making these calls that you want to make. So. Again, doesn't matter what type of calls you make, expired, you can call your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, and you want to role play before you start your lead generation time. It kind of gets you in the mood to make the calls and get you energy. Uh, you just want to make sure you have role play partners who know what they're doing. So try to pick out role play partners that are doing more business than you currently. Because if not, then you're going to become the teacher as opposed to the student. Do you know what I mean by that? So if you do role play yeah. with somebody who's never sold a house before, you become a teacher as opposed to growing and you should always be the student. So try to find people, if you're selling five houses a year, role play with people that are doing 10 to 15 and vice, you know, keep going up and up from there. But you don't wanna role play with the same person every single day because you'll get too comfortable. So you wanna make sure you have at least two or three different role play partners and separate them every couple days. So don't pick Mary every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
and then do Robert Thursday and Friday because you guys will get too comfortable with each other. And then during role play, you want to make sure what we do is we get on the call and we get right into it. So I'll call my buddy Brian, who I role play with, and I'll say right off the bat, I'll be calling Brian and I hop right into the call. I don't call and say, hey, Brian, what did you think of the Eagles game last night? Oh, it was great, wasn't it? Oh, great. So what do you want to work on today? That's not role playing. That's called taking a coffee break. So really, you hop right on the call and you just go, hey, Brian, this is Josh with Keller Williams Real Estate. How have you been? This is a business call. Do you have a minute for me? And then I'll role play into my past client script that I use for referrals. So you do have a script that you follow? Yes. So I use all different types of scripts and you can find them that use bold scripts. Um, a bit, I'm a big Mike Ferry guy. I, I uh, love his scripts. They're very question based with getting answers that you want. Where do you find uh, that? Uh, Mike Ferry, I think dot com. I think they're free. If not, you can Google. There's scripts everywhere for any type of call that you need to make. But role play, and when you role play with somebody, take it seriously. Don't joke around. You want to act like it's a real call and always end on a good note. So you want to give Miles an appointment at the end when Miles tries to close for an appointment. You don't want to always reject them because if you reject them, then it kind of carries over to the calls in a negative manner. Does anybody currently role play? On real estate. Robert with the yes, zinger. Yes, I, I, I role play, but I, rec I recently took a break because I've been role playing for years, so I just needed to take a break, Josh. So I'm guilty of that. Get back into it. It's helpful. It seems childish and so like, so wow, this is, I'm going to sound robotic. No, it'll help you get comfortable making the call. So, you know, the objections you just got from <clears> Robert <throat> on the phone at, nine, at 7.45 in the morning just came up on call number two and you know how to handle it now. Because there's only how many people can actually object to when you're making these calls to try to get business. So when I call expired, I, totally agree. Things, I know exactly what to say every time somebody brings up an objection because there's only a handful they could say. I'm not selling now. I'm taking a break. Um, you know, I already have an agent. Plans change. There's only certain things they could say. You just know how to, know how to respond and get back to them. All right, so lead generation time. So also when we, we're done our... Uh, role play, we hop right into lead generation every day at eight o'clock and we don't have any emails open. We don't check our phones for texts, uh, social media alerts, things like that. That's probably the number one thing people fail at uh, during lead generation is they have everything else going at the same time. Oh, my client's calling. I got to take this. I literally take no calls from eight to 11. I don't take any text messages, emails, anything like that. The world starts at 1101 for me. Any questions about that? That's probably the hardest thing for people to grasp that concept. They think they're going to miss out on something or their client's going to be mad at them because they waited till 1101 to return their call. It is not true. Trust me. What do you say? Like, can you give me a couple examples of um, the most common objections and what you do say to those? Um, yeah, so for uh, expired listings, it's usually I just want to wait. And so all I do is simply repeat that. Oh, so you just want to wait. Terrific. And if you sold this home, where would you go next? And get right back on the script. The, the goal uh, when you're making calls is they're going to give you an objection, no matter who you're calling. It could be a family member, a friend. It doesn't matter. Expired listing, for sale by owner. Their goal is to try to get you off the phone as quick as possible. So the more questions you ask, the more comfortable they get. If you start just talking to them, talking at them, I should say, as opposed to asking questions, that's the quickest way to get somebody off the phone. You want to do almost no talking and let them do all the talking. Let them vent about their previous realtor. Uh, let them vent about how they want to save money selling it by themselves. Let, let them get it all out. And then you just respond accordingly based on the scripts that you have. It's a lot. Sorry, I know this is uh, without scripting, but for now, I just want to kind of teach you how to get more listings. The key is just to do this every single day. Um, so we do no emails, no texts, no other programs during lead generation, staying 100% focused. I also have uh, podcasts playing while I'm lead generating. 
all that is is simply motivational podcasts, things like that, to keep my energy level at the highest possible volume it can be. That's good. Yeah, it's it, repetitious boredom. That's kind of what prospecting is. It, it is boring, sitting on a phone all day, every day, waiting for a yes, because it takes a lot of yes. For me, it's like every 18 contacts, I get an appointment. But I've been doing this for 15 years. So for a newer agent, it might take you 50 contacts. It takes a long time to get a yes. But you have to know that if you don't do it every day, you're not going to start getting yeses and start getting listing appointments. The best sources of business I think now to call um, are for sale by owners because they think it's such an amazing time to sell their house by owner, but they're a hundred percent wrong. All right, so also uh, tracking your numbers. Does anybody currently track their prospecting numbers or lead generation numbers? Not there yet. All right, let me see if I can share my screen. I'll show you kind of how I track it and uh, what's the best way for you to figure out a way to track it yourselves. So the reason I track numbers is simply just to know that if I'm going to hit my goals or not. So I set yearly goals, and then I break it down to monthly and weekly goals. And here is my tracker. Everybody see that? All right, so I daily track new contacts I make every day, FU clients, people I want to tell to F off. I'm joking. That's uh, lead follow-up contacts. Uh, leads I get daily, uh, appointments I set with sellers, appointments I go on, appointments I sign up, homes I put under contract, homes I close, hours I prospect, and then the last one's huge. So that's, I just added that this year because uh, Gene Rivers, I don't know if anybody took his class. He recommended tracking how many people you're adding to your database daily. It blew my mind. I never did that before. I always did add to my database, but now it's a focal point that the more people that I can get in the top producer, the better chance I have to grow my business. So now I attack that every single day. How many people can I add to my you know, mailing list, my email list, my text list, my video text list? Because the faster you can grow that, the faster your business will naturally grow. And then of course, this is a weekly goal tracker at the bottom. I set my weekly goals. Uh, I only work Monday through Friday and you can too. You don't have to work every day as realtors. Who's working seven days a week? Me. Me. Oh, I know it is. Getting started, I used to just run out and do whatever Good whenever I wanted to. But you need downtime. Uh, so I converted to this model where I only work Monday through Friday, like I think it was six years ago. And if somebody wants to meet on the weekend, I just say, I can't. I have another appointment already booked. How's Monday at four look? Or would five be better? So my uh, weekly goals here are pretty basic. It's how many listing appointments I want to go on, how many I want to take, how many I want to put in a contract, and how many price reductions I need to get to be able to hit my goals for the month and year. And that, that adjusts a lot. All right, any questions about that? All right. So you also want to make your lead generation fun. So does anybody actually consistently lead generate for business? Howard said he did. Is anybody else? Is everybody else then I assume selling 50 plus houses a year? And what are you doing? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, being yeah. fairly new. Every day. Who's that? Sean? How you been, bud? Yeah. How you doing? Good. My Wi-Fi on my car is actually great, so I try to turn the video off. Hey, I wanted to ask you, if you already said it, I apologize for asking again. You use I, I still have top producer just because I just I just can't let it go. I've had it so long, but I don't really I don't add to it consistently my original core mess. What do you use both databases side by side or how are you using them side by side? Uh, it's just repetitious. Uh, I have to, when we enter into one, we just enter it into the other. I mean, it takes all one minute. Specific. 
No, it takes gotcha. one minute right, to add them in each great. database. It doesn't take long. I'm not a big right, tech I guy, but I use LinkedIn. I'm the same way. I think Top Producer is a very basic, easy system to use, and I've used it for so long. Yeah. So that's why I kind of haven't dropped it yet. I should. Is there a benefit? I got rid of it for the is there a benefit to using Top Producer over the uh, command database? No. No, so I, I can just stick to command without worrying about the top producer at all. all right. yeah, they're the same systems, but command might actually be a little more advanced. Top <laughs> producer is like a dinosaur system. I just, I'm so used to it. Gotcha. Right. Top producer costs 35 hours a month by itself. So no, no need to spend the money. Command is free. Kind of old. Yeah. <laughs> it's just old, old dogs keeping the old tricks in the mm -hmm. bag somewhere. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so hey, I'm Sean. being fairly new to this. I, uh, I, haven't been lead generating really. I can't say it all, but I only actively started doing stuff within the past week. I, I joined Keller Williams, left for an army school, and I only just got back last week. And now I am actively trying to do stuff. Like I'm running an open house this weekend. Um, I we uh, got the flyers out. Um, I've got uh, postcards going out, some other stuff, but I haven't been like actively calling people because I'm not really sure how to generate a, a database and whatnot. And I know we're going to uh, talk about that along with the lead generation and whatnot. So I figured I'd wait on that. Yeah, that's you see that creating the database is the toughest part as a new agent until you really sit down and like I wrote out all the different people you can contact. So why not start off with your family first? So you literally need to go through your family tree and start writing names, first names, last name, where do they live? Uh, what's their email address? What's their phone number? Um, and enter them into your database. And if, even if you don't have a database or you don't want to use command, command's free. I don't know why you wouldn't. That's where I would start, command. And you'd be amazed. All of a sudden, you have 25 family members in your database that you could call quarterly just to ask for business. You could text them things of value. You could mail to them, depending on your budget. You can create all different plans but the goal is to continue to add to that database. So you have family first, boom, you got all them in. Then you have friends, same thing. You wanna make sure you have all their data. The data is the key because after you know, gosh, okay, John Smith's my friend, I have his cell phone number, I'm missing his email. Great point of contact for your database. You call John, say, John, hey, I'm just updating my database today so I can provide value to all my friends. Uh, with any uh, changes in the real estate market, what's the best email for you? You can do that in a text format. They're definitely going to respond. And then same thing after friends, you go to neighbors. Don't be afraid to meet your neighbors, even if they're not the nicest people. Just go around, introduce yourself, door knock, say, hey, I'm the local realtor. Yeah, you know, I'm looking to update your contact information. What's the best email on cell phone for you? That's a great way to get contacts or host a neighborhood event. That's another way to get their contact info. But you just got to get out of your comfort zone because most people who don't prospect daily, it's simply they're scared or they don't know who to call. But I don't even buy that excuse. I think it's just they're scared to call. Because you can get data from anywhere. You can go right down the uh, phone book, the old school phone book and just call people. It's the same thing. It's lead generation. But I would start with your family and friends, old coworkers, if you had another job, and just try to get as many people into your database to start before you do anything. I wouldn't even make another a prospecting call until you get your database over 100. Is anybody's database 100 or above at this point? Yes. yes. Nice, Howard. And you know what I want to share too, uh, Josh, real quick for the, uh, for the newer agents. You know, when I first got into the business, I wasn't doing a lot of lead generation as well because I was doing uh, focusing on commercial. And I lost all my savings the first year, didn't sell one house. I was in tenant court getting evicted. And my mentor at the time told me to focus on residential real estate because that's where the money is. Well, I was so motivated by being broke with three small kids that I started knocking on every expired door listing it's possible when people started saying, hey, you know what? I like you. You're aggressive. Come on in. I started selling homes and I never looked back. So I was motivated by being broke 
and getting thrown out on the street. Hopefully you guys don't get there, you know, but uh, you need to overcome the fear. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. Like, uh, I'm, I can tell you, I'm 15 years in, and I'm still a little nervous on the phone here and there, but you just got to start doing it because big picture, you, you got to think why you're doing this, why you're in the business. I don't know if you heard the big why. Like, has anybody ever really sat down and thought, why am I a realtor? Why the hell am I doing this? And like, like really answering the question too, dig as deep as you can. Like, what, why am I doing it? What, what do I want to accomplish out of this? And once you start answering those questions, that's how you could figure out your goals. Like my why is, and like probably most people's is, it's not just family, but mine's like the highest level of family. I want to be able to provide all of my family and fund the perfect life for them. I want them to be able to do whatever the heck they want, whenever they want. You know, whether it's vacations, schools, uh, the highest level sports teams, so they get the proper training to hit their goals. You know, all those things matter a lot to me. And that's why I do what I do every single day. And if you could use your lead generation as a driving force and your goals together, it'll just take off. You should almost get angry when you don't get an appointment every day because you know you haven't hit your goals. You should attack more, lead generate more. But the, it's starting off by just picking up the phone right at eight o'clock, don't wait. Because if you wait till nine, I've already called them. That's what I tell people. So then now you're competing against me at nine o'clock. I've already called them at eight and they've already got a text, maybe an email and a mailing sent to them all before you picked up the phone at nine o'clock. So you have zero. Then there's probably people in your market center, right? Who call at eight. Who's your uh, expired for sale by owner prospector? Is it Rollick? Howard is one, um, Sean, Dan Rallo. Dan, that's him. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, they're all going to beat you if, you if you don't get on the phone at eight. And I, I always start off with calls. I recommend you can't be scared to talk to people. At some point, you could have all the automation systems in place. You know, if a lead came in or you want to use command to do all the smart plans that they have, those are great. But at some point, you have to pick up the phone and talk to John Smith, who inquired about 123 Main Street. You have to, and you have to know what to say. Because if you get on the phone and you're stammering and you sound not confident at all, the buyer's not going to want to work with you. The seller's not going to work with you. But you definitely want to bring the energy. So that what we do, we make lead generation fun. It's like a competition. And not just between me and my teammate, but it's other agents in the office. You know, we constantly are competing to try to beat each other. And that's the kind of atmosphere you should create because it becomes fun. They listen to, like I said, podcasts, you know, motivational music, things like that during lead generation time. But the key is like, uh, any questions so far at this point? I know I'm going through a lot at once. Um, within the, from eight to 11, you said you, like how many contacts would you say you go through? You uh, daily, I make anywhere from like 15 to 25 contacts daily. And that's not just new contacts. That includes like lead follow-up contacts. Okay. And that's all aspects of contact. So if like a seller lead contacts me via text message and we have a real estate conversation, that's a contact. Do you set a goal like daily? Like I have to have this many people before I finish my lead generation for the day? My goal is just to set one appointment a day. Okay. That's my main goal, because I know if I can get one a day, that's five a week, one will cancel, uh, most likely. I'll probably cancel one that's not motivated. So I'll probably try to go on three appointments a week and take two to three listings a week if I can. That's my goal. But that won't start happening if you don't start lead generating. So what happens is every day I'll, I'll call, like I said, from eight to 11, and I'm accumulating, and I'm going to grab them for you. Hold on. So this morning I started calls right at eight. It's gonna be hard to see, but what happens is I talked to Robert today. Robert was an expired listing. I talked to him right at eight o'clock. Robert said to call back at five. So what I do is I print out his house info. So this is how you grow your database and you create a lead follow-up system that's flawless. 
So Robert told me to call at five. So I know I already talked to him. I asked him if it was his cell phone. He was at work. He said, I can't talk right now. Definitely call me back at five. So I followed up the call with a text. Hey, Robert, thanks for taking my call today. I will be calling you right at five o'clock as promised. Thanks again, Josh Baer, Keller Williams Real Estate, all in the text. So boom, he's talked to me at eight. He got a text at 8.01 and I'll be calling at five o'clock. I can guarantee you out of the probably the 10, 15 calls he got today, I'll be the only one with three contacts to Robert in the same day. So I already have a leg up on all the competition. But what happens, the most important part now though is Robert is a lead. So leads, that's what we're generating for, right? That's what we make calls for to lead generate. And you generate Robert. Robert said, I'm interested, just call me back later. The key is to not let Robert fall through the cracks. So what I do is, like I said, I call, I text. If I have his email, he would have got an email by before we talked at five o'clock. And I also send out a mailing. So regardless what happens at five o'clock, he's gonna have a mailing from me in a couple of days. Um, that mailing might just have a little information about my team and what we could do to help with any future real estate questions or needs. And so at five o'clock, we'll have a conversation. But let's say Robert's not quite ready. Robert's three months out. You know, we're thinking about waiting until after the holidays. I'll go through my best objection handlers to try to get him to meet now. But sometimes people just, you can't make people move no matter what scripts you have. Everybody should write that one down. You can't make somebody motivated to move. They're going to sell their house when they're ready to sell their house. You can be the best objection handler on the planet. But if John's Robert, let's say, is not ready to move until February, nothing I could say in the world is going to make Robert list his house today with me. So you got to know when to push the button to list and wait. So if I call Robert at five and he says, Josh, me and Julia talked it over. You know, we don't want to meet with anybody till the new year. So this is what will separate you versus anybody you compete against. So now Robert's going to go on an aggressive lead follow-up plan. And you don't have to have a fancy system to do this. I'm old school paper and pen with lead follow-up. So let me see if I have one. All right, so this one's gonna be hard to see, but if you can look at the dates on the right-hand side of the sheet, this is how many times I have followed up with this contact. So this was a lead I got back in June of this year. He was looking to sell his house in Collingswood, New Jersey. And I have followed up aggressively probably 20 times since June. So all I do daily is with Robert, who I just, like I said, I contacted this morning. Let's say Robert says I'm not ready to meet till the new year. All I'm gonna do is file Robert away in a binder called lead follow-up, an old school paper and pen binder. And if I talk to Robert today, I'll schedule my next lead follow-up call with him probably before the end of the year. And during that call with him, I am just going to update him on the market and not ask him about meeting to sell his house. So that's really what's going to separate me versus anybody else who's calling him and just asking, hey, when are you ready to meet to interview agents? When are you ready to meet to interview agents? Everyone's calling for that. You've got to show value. And that's how you're going to separate yourself versus everybody you compete against. So now I'm showing Robert that I know the market. I'm going to say, hey, Robert, did you know one, two, three Union Avenue around the corner. That one actually just sold for 265. Isn't that great? You know, Robert, I know I don't have your email. I'm going to send you any other recent sales too. What's the best email for you? That's literally what the next call will be to Robert if tonight doesn't go well. I'll give him a quick market update, let him know I know the market and ask for his email so I can start emailing him recent sales in the area. Any questions about that? No right, questions. So Thank you. Yeah, the lead follow-ups is the key. You can't just talk to Robert once and send him one mailing and he says, call back in the new, new year <clears throat> and expect come January when I call him that he's going to remember me unless you made him remember you. And there's so many different ways to do that. Like... Uh, so I'll probably send him a happy holidays card. I'll probably send him a text. Happy New Year from your, you know, Josh Bayer, Keller Williams Real Estate. 
and then I'll call him when he asks me to call him back. No other realtors are doing it. Most realtors who cover expireds, withdrawns, canceled listings, or sell by owners call a handful of times and then give up. Any questions about lead follow up? Hey, Josh. Can I give you a, a, a quick uh, story about the importance of lead follow up? Yeah. All right. I, I was at a job and uh, guys talking about uh, selling a home and I got into talking to him and I'm like, yeah, you know, my wife's into the real estate and yada, yada, yada. And he's telling me about this real estate agent and he goes, yeah, this guy, he goes, he called me seven years ago. And from that point on, I got a card in the mail, either a birthday card or a Christmas card. But for seven years, this guy gave me information. He goes, and when I, it was time for me to sell my house, he goes, I had no choice than to call this guy. I said, who is it? He goes, his name is Howard Winters. And I <laughs> just, just, to, just to explain to you people the importance of following up, Howard is the king. And uh, believe me, it's it's definitely important. And everybody should, uh, if you're ever in the office, try and pick his brain. That's all. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. It's the truth. <laughs> so what's stopping everybody else from getting on the phones? Anyone? What was the question? What's stopping everyone from lead generating every day? I'm always curious. I ran out I'm of actually not call. at the office until a little bit later, but I mean, could I even start doing it? Like when I'm on my way to work, like, was that a thing? Like even when I'm in the car or at home, I could call people, right? Whenever you want. Yeah. It's just, just, you should try to get into a habit of doing it at the same time every day and being in a professional setting, if you can. If you have to work from home, set up a nice professional office, even if it's just a desk or a table, away from distractions. Life's different now, I know, with COVID, but, and kids and having stuff going on with activities, but you want to make sure you do this every single day and create a habit. I always tell people that one call could change your life. We had one, uh, it's my favorite story to tell. I had one seller when I first moved to Jersey eight years ago, who I called as an expired listing. And we sold their $125,000 condo. But since then, we've got, I think, like 10 to 12 pieces of business from them. Referrals, just one call I made. They sold, they bought, and referred us to every single family and friend member family and friend of theirs ever since. So since, yeah, one call, I probably made fifty to $60,000 of one phone call. Craziness. If you want to make money, you got to get on the phone. It's that easy. Another powerful thing you could add to uh, your prospecting is video messages. So I constantly send out video messages to leads as well, just introducing myself but make sure you're professionally dressed in a professional setting. You don't want to be driving in your car or walking around. You want to make sure the video looks good. You can just do it from your phone. Do you Anything have a recorded video that you use or do you make a different one every time? Make a different one every time. And it's very personalized. So that way I'm saying their name, uh, what they contacted me about, or, hey, when's the last time we talked? You know, so let's say, I hope, you hope surgery went well. You know, little things like that really hit home with people. I, would, I hope I know you were on vacation. I hope all went well. Sorry to come home, but just following up as promised to see when you want to get together to discuss your home selling and moving needs. Give me a call here. This is my cell phone. Thanks. Have a great day. And bring Apologize. the energy. You really want to bring the energy and smile. You don't want to sound dead. There's people I role play with sometimes, or they come in and sit in with me and do calls, and they just sound robotic and have no energy that will lead to zero business 
if you don't get on the phone and have high energy. We're salespeople. People want to work with other people that are happy and energetic. So if you're not, you better fake it. Well, you're absolutely right, uh, Josh. And I just want to piggyback off of what you said, you know, just um, picking up the phone. Um, it was February. So I, you know, calling expires and called this expired. And we started talking. He said he was a commercial um, agent out of Pennsylvania, but he doesn't do any, you know, real estate, you know, sell any properties here at the shore. And he had a um, $2 million beach block property he was trying to sell for years. I convinced him that I was the best agent to sell the property. And I sold it in two weeks um, for $125,000 above the asking price. So my biggest commission, and I just picked up the phone, um, $40,000 commission, you know? Wow. And then, then he gave me his other property. He actually fired his realtor now, gave me his other property in our area, $700,000 listing. I got it under contract now. And he also has given me, he has like a, some land near the casinos that he want me to list for like $2 million. And what is interesting, I never even met this guy when he was giving me all his business. He just invited me out to his, uh, one of his properties about 30 minutes away, something that he do every year for veterans. And, and we had a great relationship. And when I met him, it was just like, like we knew each other. And it was just great. All I did was just pick up the phone guys the biggest commission ever. And now he's giving me all of his business. He, he wants to buy another beach block property that I'm checking into him. And he's all cash, all cash, you know? And video follow-up is good. I received a referral today. Um, lady wants to sell her house out in Williamstown. And uh, I talked to her and I followed up with a video, you know? So it's very important. And you definitely want to differentiate yourself from other realtors. So you need to stand out. So everything you're saying, Josh, is, is right on point. Good stuff. I would say upgrade everything too. Like, uh, so when you lead generate, even if it's at home, you know, don't have the sweatpants on and the hoodie. You know, get it, get it, get your suit on, get your nice pants, a dress shirt. You feel more powerful on the phone when you're dressed for success compared to in lounge mode. It's a whole mindset thing. Your mindset, how you go into your calls or your text or your video to whatever you choose to do for lead generation, you should be ready to go and it'll change your life. I was always told going out for the appointment because what are you going to do if somebody tells you, yeah, come over right now? Yep. I say it all the time. Don't come to the office unprepared to go on an appointment. Yeah. So we can call you and say, I'm ready to list my $500,000 home. Right, can you meet with me in an hour? Oh, I got to run home and get my makeup on and, get my hair done. Nope, that should already be ready to go. You can miss that opportunity, that's all. Any other questions Any I can help with? No, I think that was very, very informational. Very good. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Good info. Yeah, if anything comes up, you can uh, message me or find me on Facebook. And a friend request me or private message me there, or I'll put my uh, contact information into the chat box. Oop, press to enter. Maybe I'm struggling with anything else I could help with before I go. I had a question for Howard, actually. Yeah, go ahead. You need a role playing partner? <laughs> no, <laughs> not right now. I actually have one every day, five days okay. a week so far. So once I, uh, when I need another one, I definitely will let you know. Who am I talking to? Because I, I can't see you right now. Marcus Marconi. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, we can do that one day. Cool. I'll let you awesome. know when I have uh, availability. Who else is stepping up and wants to role play with Marcus? Got takers. I got Tom. Morning. Right. I'm willing to do one. Do some. Cool. You could uh, schedule something. I'll leave my email. Yeah, put your email, put mine in too. Let's go. 
All right, like, boy, oh, right Make good? sure the kids are napping too. <laughs> I can do nights as well if you need to do that. But. Thanks, everybody, for joining. It was good to meet you. Thank you, Josh. If you Thanks, want to come in too, Likewise, to take care. Here, trip up here ever and, uh, watch prospecting live so you can actually see what it's like. Feel free to come to the office. Just message me a day ahead of time and you can come up and just bring me breakfast or a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be something cool to Thank see. You. Thank you very much, Josh.